Greetings ladies and gentlemen, my name is Sliced Lime and I have uh, sort of made it a point of pride to make high quality Minecraft replay mod shots. I've gotten a lot of good feedback over the years on this and I've wanted to make a tutorial series of sorts for a while showing you guys off how to master the replay mod, how to make advanced use of it, how to get around some of its limitations. So this is going to be it. You are seeing now some of the most advanced shots that I've made and at the end of the series it's going to be probably five pieces. Then you're going to know exactly how I've made all of these shots and you're going to be able to do a similar shot for yourself. Now in order to get started with this I do require that you know the basics of the replay mod. I will assume in this series that you know how to deal with the timeline, how to set up keyframes for both the camera and for the time movement, and I will assume that you know how to render a file with it. The basics, that is. But there are a lot of hidden things in the replay mod that I will show you down the line. If you don't know these basics, then Crushed Pixel, one of the authors of the mod, has an excellent tutorial video up. I'll try to link that right here on the video and in the description. Now, every episode of this tutorial series is going to have a sort of target shot that we'll be making during the tutorial. Something that is a good shot for an introduction, or a trailer, or just a shot in a Let's Play series, whatever. A eh, reasonably good-looking, impressive shot. For this one, I have imported my world from my Hotbar Survival Let's Play series. I've imported that world into Minecraft 1.11 and we're going to do a simple shot. So if I just uh, go back here a bit and we'll be discussing these kind of things shortly, then you'll see that this isn't really much at all. Basically standing here for a little bit and then I shall be walking around a little bit in a second here and I'll be disappearing off around this corner. Good job me. Now, the first thing that we're going to discuss is in terms of render quality. And uh, now, if I go back to sort of five seconds, which is about where I want this replay shot to start, then you can see that I look a little bit odd right here. So if I hit play, there's all kinds of glitching going on for a few seconds. That isn't so bad, but the worst part is that if you make an actual replay shot, if I set my time and camera positions right where I had the camera right there, and then render the shot, it's going to behave pretty similarly. It's not going to be exactly the same, but it's pretty similar. And even if your character doesn't have a cape, which is the most obvious problem for me right now, that my cape goes all over the place, this problem also applies to many, many other things in the world. I had this problem, for instance, in the, the Glass Core series Dragon Fight, where the dragon would glitch out terribly at the start of the shot. So, one thing that is good to do is if I want this replay to start at 5 seconds, I actually go back further. And there we go, to 2 seconds. And I'm going to start my timeline here. And then if I, you know, let's go there, pop into existence. But if I press V, which is another good thing to know, let's zoom in a bit. Our shot is not going to be that long, so maybe 30 seconds shows us better. If I press V, that syncs my timeline position according to the speed that I'm running. So if I put this to 0 0.1, it will instead be this far in. But if I want this to be running at real time speed and press V, we'll see. Okay, so here is how far in I've gotten. So let's uh, say I let this play for a bit and then put another time keyframe in here. Now we have a little bit of an initial stretch for the game to settle and then what we're actually going to be making is going to be starting right here. So that way when our video actually starts all the glitching and stuff that happens at the very beginning is going to be already dealt with and then we'll in post whenever we use this shot we're just going to cut away that part. Now for the target of this episode, what we're going to do is sort of an introductory shot. And these moves are not necessarily going to be the best for an introductory shot. These are chosen to highlight some of the problems that you might encounter and we're going to work around it. Nevertheless, I think this will be a decent shot. So we want to sort of start here and I'm just going to outline some of the keyframes so that we have something to work with. We want to start here, we want to go directly down for a bit. 
So let's just set a keyframe here. Then we want to spin 180 around our axis. And actually kind of want to be directly over here at the end of that. So let's set another keyframe there. And then what we want to be doing is we want to go sort of down to where I am. And look at me. So let's say we end up here. And what we want to happen is we want to come to a sort of smooth stop here. So if I play that for a bit, we'll see as the timeline goes, I'm sort of standing still. But as I come down here, okay, so this keyframe we kind of want sort of here. And then what I want is to just stand here and follow me until I've left around the corner there. And then from there, we want to sort of smoothly transition out away. So if we play a little further, just keep hitting V to keep going. Then we kind of want to we just start off and then head out to C. Like over here. And then we'll set an actual end time stamp there too. So that's basically what we want. We want a zoom in, spin, settle down looking at me, and follow me around with the camera for a bit, and then go away. And then we want to render that in a nice looking manner. Now, if I go way back to the start and I hit play, uh, we're going to discuss one more thing that is a pain when working with this mod, and that is this thing. That took forever, right? And this is what we have currently. We obviously have a fair bit of work to do. Cameras glitching all over the place. But it's kind of a rough outline of what we want to do. Yeah. So, that's good enough for a start. But what we should start off with discussing is that delay. If I hit play here again, that would take forever. Now, we also had this weird little section in the beginning where the camera was inside my head and then switched over. That's actually okay, because once the camera moves, that's when I know that I should start the actual video. So we'll keep that. Not having a position keyframe will make the camera just sit around wherever it happens to be until the first position keyframe, which in this case is just too just good. The problem is there's no way for me to effectively work with iterating on this timeline and tweaking it if I have to sit around for 10 seconds waiting every time I hit play. This gets progressively worse the longer your actual replay file is. Like mine starts at zero here and ends at 40. That's no problem. But I've worked a lot with replay files where I've recorded four hours of Let's Play footage and then wanted some replays for that after two hours. And every time you hit play, then this is how the replay mod works. If, if you go forwards, it plays whatever happened. But if you go backwards, there's no way to rewind what happened. So what the replay mod does in the background is Start from scratch, load in the world through the replay, and then fast forward through everything up until that point. That means that if I just go one second back on this timeline, you get this long stall while the whole thing is reloading from start and playing back to that. Even in this tiny short replay, this took... Oh wow, that took maybe 20 seconds. So that's not, that's not an effective way to work. So... There is a hidden feature in the replay mod that Crushed Pixel added for me once I brought this problem up, and I don't know how many people actually know about it. What you can do, so we want to replay this path to tweak it, and we don't want to take that hit. Now, we are already in here, so we can't really do that without redoing the entire work. We can't rewind time. So what you can do is hit, hold Shift and hit Play Camera Path. And you'll see the timeline started moving, and the, we see the camera path, but the whole world is paused. So what that actually does is it plays back the camera path, but not the time. It doesn't actually play the time in the world. So that, it, But that allows us to see the camera movement. It doesn't allow us to sync it to the world or anything, but it allows us to see the camera movement, and that way we can tweak that. Which is exactly what we wanted. Now... 
Where does the camera path go? There's another feature that you really, really need to switch on. The default key binding for this is H. And uh, it is called, let's see, you can go into, oh, where's that mod options, replay mod config, and it's called show path preview. They moved all of this option stuff between the versions. Uh, if you're using 1.8, there's a big replay mod options button, easily, more easily accessible. But anyway, H is the default key binding for just switching it on. And now we have a, a path that we can work with. So let's take a look at the segment and try to identify the problems. One problem, it's not terribly apparent here, but one problem is that the speed doesn't smoothly go from one point to another. And we can take some of these points and move them and you can see how the segment changes. So this is actually really useful to look at something and you can see how this affects the path. So white here, brighter, means more change per time. So if we play this segment back now, so all I've done is move this keyframe in time. This keyframe now happens earlier than it did before. But if we play the segment now, then we can see that there's sort of a almost hard stop there, where it previously was a bit more smooth. Now this is actually one of the bigger problems of Replay Mod, and that is that getting smooth motion is usually not a problem, but getting smooth acceleration, smooth change in speed can be a bit of a problem. And what I actually recommend is exactly what I've been doing here. Uh, look at the path, move your keyframes a little bit in the time sense, not so much in the space necessarily, but in time, and you will get a smooth motion. So at this point you can see now the the line is much more smoothly colored. It's not like a bright white spot in the middle. Now the next problem, also by the way we can start this at any point, so if I put my my time marker here and hit shift play, we'll see that it starts right from that point. Now obviously we have some problems here in that we are going straight through some of the building. So I can you sort of move the camera here, you can see here is where it happens. So this keyframe is probably what I should be moving. Kind of don't want to move that, so let's instead just take the camera from here and just move it out a bit so that we are maybe like this. And just add another keyframe there, and then we can see how this affects the track. So that looks pretty good. If I play that back from maybe here, you can see that we spin and then now shuffle off to the side of this thing and then come down here, which is what we want, and then weird stuff happens and then we're on our way. And then lots of jagged uh, stalls there, which I don't really know what it's about, why it's doing that, but that doesn't matter because frame drops don't matter in our rendered replay. Now this little loop that we are looking at here in the path is one of the core problems of the replay mod. One of my most common techniques is simply to work around this problem. Now, in order to understand what this problem actually is, we have to learn about interpolation. Replay Mod has some different methods of interpolations, and there are more. So, back to school pane over here, and let's take a look at interpolation. There are many different types of interpolation, and in terms of Replay Mod concept, what interpolation means is how does the camera get from one keyframe to another? Simple as that. So you take one keyframe and you don't want it to sit there until the next keyframe happens and then immediately jump, you want it kind of to move smoothly. Now there are several different ways of doing this and they have different advantages and drawbacks. The most simple one is a linear interpolation and this actually exists in replay mod 2. You can go into mod options config for the replay mod and you have an option here for linear path interpolation. If you switch that on then you will see that all the segments become exactly straight. Note down here that now we don't have this loop problem anymore. This now looks fine. So if we just play the path here, we can see that everything is now very hard. All the changes in directions is pretty hard. Uh, but this part sort of looks like it's supposed to now. It's just that the change in movement is no longer smooth, which you could have guessed, given how hard these edges are now. 
So that doesn't completely solve our problems. So let's go back to switching linear path interpolation off. What does linear path interpolation off mean in terms of the replay mode? In the replay mod, switching linear interpolation off means that you switch to something called cubic interpolation or, to be fancy, piecewise cubic polynomial interpolation. This method of interpolation has two main properties. The first one, just like linear interpolation, is that it passes through every single control point. The second one is that not only does the motion through every control point need to be smooth, the change in motion also needs to be smooth. This creates curves that are extremely smooth, but has the problem that the curve can also take quite a detour sometimes. I will mention quickly that there are other interpolation methods, methods that actually solve both of these problems and that I prefer much more. The one that I tend to use for my custom stuff is one called Catmull rom interpolation instead, and that fixes this problem, but we sadly don't have that option in the replay mod. Now, take a look at this sequence again. The first problem is this loop. The other problem is going to be visible right up here when the camera starts spinning. What we basically wanted was the camera to go straight down, then to start spinning, and then to stop spinning and go down. But that's not what actually happens. If you look, it's a little bit subtle in this, in this case, but you can start seeing it around there. The camera actually sort of twists the opposite direction, it counter-rotates because remember how I mentioned that the movement of the camera has to be smooth through the keyframe. Well that means that the rotation when it hits this point has to be pointed this way and already rotating around the axis this way. So that means that it first has to twist the other way, it counter-rotates in order to then hit the keyframe with the correct rotational speed. That's not what we wanted and there isn't much we can do about it there other than twisting that first keyframe up there, but that also produces the undesired effect of the twist starting too early. Same thing goes down here. We really wanted this keyframe to sit still and move. Now, you might think that, hey, we could just add more keyframes in here. So maybe if I add one in the middle, like maybe pointed here, that would make it fixed, but no, it's actually just going to make the problem even worse. So in this mode of interpolation, in cubic interpolation, there's no way around this. So that would then mean that we can't make this shot in the replay mod, but we can make this shot in the replay mod and it involves re-rendering and using the segments. So we are going to use both the cubic interpolation and the linear interpolation to do this. And the saving grace in this case is that both linear and cubic interpolation actually hit the exact same keyframe, so the keyframes will look exactly the same. And that means that we can then sync up the video and cut out the parts that we need. And that will let us complete this shot. So the first thing that we're going to do is render this camera path. We can use the default rendering, default quality. It's usually fine unless you have a very busy scene. You'll be fine with a default quality. Let's do 30 FPS for this one and then talk a little bit about video resolution. Let's see, I wanted to make this video in 1080p. That's fine, that's what we're gonna do this time. I don't want to render this thing in 1080p. Now, in the latest changes, Crushed Pixel has actually added anti-aliasing, which is basically a way to make the edges of things in your image look nicer. However, that isn't out yet, but we can get that effect anyway by just increasing our resolution and then downsampling the result. So you probably want to double this or something similar. Let's go for just one higher and do 2560 times 1440. Now, one thing I will mention before we render this is that in the latest version of the replay mod, there is a bug. And that bug is related to the shift playing ability that I mentioned earlier. So if you shift click to preview path and then render your camera path, you're actually going to render a stationary preview. So before we render this, we're just going to hit play normally once and that will fix our problem. All right, so now we've played that, we can pause this and then go to render and render this file. Okay, so now we have rendered this path, including all of the problems that we just mentioned. 
Now, if we go into mod options and config, then we can switch linear path interpolation on. And there's a, a way to keybind that, I think, but I haven't done it. You don't necessarily need to either. Just know where it is so you can switch it. Okay, so we're going to render exactly the same thing again, but this time with linear interpolation. Okay, so with those things rendered, we now have basically our source material. We are going to have to cut between these videos at exactly these keyframe points. So one of the ways we can do that is by looking at the keyframe, checking its timeline position here. Uh, so in this case, it's four seconds and 379 milliseconds into the video file. In my experience, that doesn't actually match up 100% with the frames in your output video file. So I find it better to use an alternate method. Whatever method you use, it's up to you. But anyway, we are going to head on over to our video editing software and finish the process there. Okay, so we are now in Sony Vegas, which is my video editing software of choice. Doesn't matter which one you use, you can use whichever one, and the concepts should be easily transferable to whatever it is that you're using. I have my two clips in here. You can see that the thumbnails look pretty identical. That's because they are very close to each other. We're gonna stack them on top of each other like this. And you can see if I just hit play here to play the preview, that the top one, the one that we're actually seeing, that's the cubic version with all of the loops and counter rotations and everything. So what we want to do is kind of cut away pieces of this and expose the one under it and then cut away everything else from this. So one of the easier ways that I find to sync these up, uh, well, actually to start off with, let's cut away, trim the starts of these so that we get only the actual part that we wanted. So here is the very first frame that we want to care about. We'll cut away the start of the video. And now we have only the video that we actually want, but without twitching capes and whatever. So here we start and we want to sync up a point to this somewhere in here where there is a keyframe that matches up before the spin happens. Now, obviously you could try to sort of see, oh, that's going to be where it's straight here. But what I find easiest is to just set one of these to 50% opacity or somewhere about, so you get an overlay of both. So now we can clearly see that they are not aligned at all. Uh, they're going to start out aligned and then one is going to turn out. But here somewhere we have one frame where they're both pretty much equal. You can see that here everything stops being blurry and starts being sharper, and that's because these are pretty much on top of each other. So we're going to split both of the clips here, and we're going to remove the cubic clip there, and then let's put this back to 100% opacity. And then let's play that again and see how that turned out. So now you can see that even though the transition is a little bit hard, we actually have exactly what we wanted, the initial part, and then it starts turning. So we're going to keep that clip, and then we're going to keep working with the rest. So we want to keep the cubic part from that section down to here somewhere where it actually, you could probably see it. Hereabouts is where the clips line up again. And this is what we're, we want to stop this whole loop part. So we want to find that. And then it's here at some point at the end of that, we're going to line up again. So about here. Note that if your keyframes in your replay mod aren't at an exact timestamp that matches a frame, then you won't get a 100% match. That doesn't matter because your frames are nearly at the same place, so it's going to be just fine. Now we can drop out the remaining linear clips and put the two cubic clips that we want to 100% opacity and remove the remaining cubic clip that we didn't want. And that gives us a full result with the entire clip that we wanted. So if we play that now, we go straight down, spin around, go all the way back down, look at me, follow me around as I turn, and then smoothly slide out to C. And that is our entire clip. Now, obviously you can still work on this a bit more, but this shows you that it is possible to do some things that don't seem to be possible at first in the Minecraft replay mod. And that I think was more than enough for a first episode. We're going to have, like I said, five episodes, the next episode is going to build more on this, doing multiple renders for the same timeline, and use that to show two fancy new shots. One, a custom shot of 
a server environment and one a time lapse of time lapses if you will and then we'll move on to even more complex things down the line i hope you enjoyed this tutorial if you did please help me out and leave a like spread the word about it to other video creators who could find this useful my name is sliced light thank you for watching and see you next time